Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to a lovely, slightly damp start on a campsite down in the depths of Cornwall. Yes, I am still here at Hills. It's not Hills View, is it? Hills. Oh, what's this place called? Hill something. Hill. Hill. Ah, I can see it on the dashboard. Hillscrest View campsite. Ever so professional here don't you know? Today I'm bringing you the most exciting slow cooker recipe I think I've ever done and I've only made this once at home and it worked. We are making a loaf of bread in the slow cooker and it's not even my recipe that we're using, I'm stealing it off the back of a box of bread yeast. I mean seriously we are so professional. So what I've done is because I've got the rinky dink, oh you can't see that, hang on, oh and excuse my beautiful hairstyle, I've just, it's like half eight in the morning and I've just tried to tame the beast that is my hair and so I just look like a drowned rat for the first few hours of every day, it's fine. I can live with it if you can. So there's my rinky dink little slow cooker and I think we said that this was one and a half litre. So what I did, I guessed, very scientific. The recipe on here, uh, you know I'm getting to that age where my arms need to be longer. A 900 gram loaf tin, so one sachet of yeast is for a 900 gram loaf tin, which I think must be two pound tin in old money. I don't know, it gets so ruddy confusing, doesn't it? So I kind of guessed and I just cut their recipe in half to try for this little slow cooker. The only downside, well, there's two downsides to today's recipe. One, I'm trying not to eat bread because I'm trying to eat low carb, so that's tricksy. And two, I have, um, I'm going out this afternoon to Jamie Oliver's 15 at Watergate Bay in Cornwall. Um, I'm meeting my bestie and we're going to a food panel where there's going to be journalists and food writers and like some really big names in the food industry and we're going to be discussing the future of food and stuff and I can't turn up looking like I've slept in the van for the last two nights, if you catch my drift. And the only problem with this recipe is that I am going to get covered in flour and dough and God knows what. And I didn't think about this before I got dressed this morning, so I do have today's clothes on. And I'm actually thinking I probably should change into yesterday's mucky stuff. But who can be bothered with that? We'll just deal with it, as always. So... All you're going to need for this is a slow cooker and electric hookup, obviously. I'm assuming that if you're watching this recipe and you're a camper that you plan to have electric hookup or you've just got a monster array of solar powers on your roof. I don't. So electric hookup and a slow cooker. Greaseproof paper or baking paper. This is to line the bowl and make your life so much easier in so many ways. It will stop the bread from sticking to the pan. It'll make clean up a lot easier and it means you can safely lift it out when it's still hot without burning your pinkies, fingers crossed. Um, bread flour, obviously this isn't regular plain flour. Bread flour has more gluten, I wanna say. I can't remember, I should have read up on this, honestly. Professional. Some oil, I've got olive oil, but they would recommend vegetable oil. It's all I got, we're going with it. Obviously some Cornish sea salt, please make it Cornish, folk. make it Cornish. And some fast action dried yeast, mine is from Tesco's hashtag not sponsored and a mixing bowl which I forgot so I'm using the trusty saute pan hence me getting a little bit concerned about how mucky I'm about to get and the only other thing you're going to need which I nearly forgot is warm water not hot because you'll kill the yeast and not cold because you won't activate the yeast so it needs to be warm kind of like stick your hands in and it's warm kind of temperature again very scientific around here. So I need 150 millilitres of this warm water and I forgot my measuring device, but I do keep this in the van at all times because I like to put flowers in it and it's really cute. Um, but this is a measurement for American cups. So I'm just gonna have to whiz off to Google and find out what measurement makes 150 mils. And yes, I could have done this before I switched the camera on, but I forgot. It's like early in the morning, guys. It's early. Give a girl a break, would ya? Are you ready? Let's do it. So in this little bowl, I have brought 250 grams of strong white bread flour. And that's going into my improvised mixing bowl. And then I'm gonna want half a teaspoon of Cornish sea salt, which is probably about that much. Then sugar. Now we're gonna need half a tablespoon, apparently. So I reckon, I reckon that much is fine. Oh, I need a mixing spoon too. <clears throat> and I shall use this beautiful wooden spoon that Johnny recently carved for me. Isn't that lovely? He's so clever. So then you need one of your little sachets of 
fast action dry yeast. Now in here is seven grams. I'm splitting that in half, so I need to try and get half of this out. I don't know, what do you think, half? Yeah, that'll do. And then you're just gonna mix all of that around so it's all incorporated into the flour. Oh, it's just like a cooking video now, isn't it? Eat your heart out, Jamie. So if I go just under, now fill the temperature and that's love. Oh, that actually does feel really nuts. <laughs> Okay, so because we're cutting the damn recipe in half, we need half a half of 25 mils. So we need 12 and a half mils of oil. A tablespoon is 15 mils, so I need to come in just a little bit under. Do you see how mathematically technical I'm getting? It's almost eight in the morning. Damn it. Okay, so fingers crossed, we'll stop about there. What do you reckon? Happy? Pour that in. Yeah, I reckon I was right, look. Do you want some close-up action? Here you go. I might even do this bit in slow-mo for you, if you're really good. Normally I'd be putting a little bit of flour down here to get kneading that bread, but on the box it suggested oil. I'm just gonna zoom out a bit because as soon as I start doing this, I can't touch the camera because I'll be like covered and everything. And then I'm gonna dump it all out in there and then we're gonna knead. If you want a little kneading how-to, you got your little bowl of dough, fold the top over towards you, then use the heel of the other hand, to push it away from you. And then give it a, what's that, 90 degree turn, fold and push, turn, fold, push, turn, fold push and that's basically all you do and not only is this a really therapeutic thing to do it will make you look like a campsite rock star if you knock up this loaf of bread and your slow cooker next time you're camping with your mates they're gonna think you're a bloody genius I kid you not I tell you what using the oil instead of the flour is brilliant my hands have hardly got any on them and when I did this at home using flour on the board I was absolutely covered. Roll your dough around and pick up any stray bits that are trying to escape. Oh my God, this is fun. Okay, I am still going. I'm getting a little bit out of puff and my arm is getting a really good workout here, but I think I'm pretty much done. If I show you how it looks now, I mean, it looks like a proper ball of dough, doesn't it? It's lovely, it feels so good. So once you've reached a point where you're happy, then, turn it over scoot your hands up underneath it and kind of do that a little bit that's what the proper bakers do which clearly I'm not but it kind of shows willing so you get a nice smooth top basically on your lump of dough right I'm just going to stand that back in my bowl for a moment quick wipe down and amazingly I am not covered oil on the counter is definitely the way to go we are getting there I promise this is probably the most long-winded recipe it's ever happened in here Okay, then get one's slow cooker, get one's grease proof paper, just kind of guesstimate a great big whacking chunk of it. And then stick your grease proof paper in the bowl. And I don't think it matters which way around the paper goes, if I'm honest, because you're kind of just using it as a handle and to protect it from sticking to the bowl, which either side would do. Take your beautiful little ball of dough, Pop it, or should I say nestle it? Come and have a look. That looked pretty. Nestle it in your slow cooker. And then all you need to do then is snip the top of the paper off. There, doesn't need to be tidy, just needs to be like that. And then that's what you've got, a little lovely cocoony nest of bread dough in paper. My dear friends, you can sit back down and relax because all of the work is now over. All you need to do, pop the lid on and switch it on to high. And that is it. Oh no, it's not, hang on. You then need to set your timer for two and a half hours. Now, quick inclusion here. When I was looking on the internet at how people bake bread in slow cookers, they probably weren't using one of these rinky dink little ones they were probably using a three and a half litre. So it will probably be cooked after two, two and a quarter hours. However, I'm still gonna do it for the two and a half hours because 
what happens is obviously the top isn't going to go golden as if it's in an oven the top looks weird and like it still looks like raw wet dough it looks a bit gross actually however when you take it out and flip it upside down the whole bottom of the loaf is dark golden brown i kid you not once it cools it creates the crunchiest crust ever the top never gets a crust you're never going to get a crust on that bit that's why you kind of want to flip it upside down because that bit's ugly but yeah the bit that lines the bowl the bit that's in touch with the elements of the heat of the slow cooker oh my god so damn crunchy and to check a loaf of bread is done all you need to do is take it carefully out because obviously it's hot take it out flip it upside down and tap the bottom with your knuckles and if it sounds hollow then the bread is cooked but there we go i now have nothing to do for the next two and a half hours so i think the kettle might need to go back on it's a strong possibility oh and by the way you don't need to prove the dough at all first because the heat of the slow cooker is so low it proves as it cooks how wicked is that honestly you're gonna love it you gotta try it i'm just sat here editing at my laptop and i suddenly got a whiff of bread cooking so i don't want to open the lid because i don't want to let that steam out but i don't know if you can see how much that has jumped up it still hasn't hit the lid yet but you can see in there there's quite a bit going on in that pot unfortunately the timer on my phone got knocked so i reset it to one and a half hours but i don't know if that's correct so it's going to be a bit of guesswork on this one, but then that pretty much sums up my whole cooking style. Alrighty, the moment of truth. I think it's been two and a half hours, but as you know, it could have been a lot less or a lot more. I've got no clue, so <laughs> this recipe's going really well. There's moisture on the underneath of the lid, so try not to drip too much of that over your bread. Now, the top looks gross. I did warn you about that, didn't I? It looks raw and soggy and a bit gross so try not to panic we're just gonna grab hold of the paper as best we can and oik there we go and then if you peel the paper down dun, dun, dun. actually you need some close-up of this don't you and there it is really soft and squidgy and weird on the top but golden on the bottom and if we give it that knock that sounds hollow to me but that my friends is how you make a cracking loaf of bread in a slow cooker in a camper van and it nuts i love it anyway that's it for this week i hope you guys have enjoyed this stupid recipe video honestly i don't know why they let me loose on youtube as always i hope you have a great week ahead and i hope you have an awesome weekend or whatever you're up to hopefully you guys are still getting out and about in your vans too fingers crossed don't let the weather hold you back there's a big old world to be explored out there. Go make the most of it. That's the end of my little run of videos that I filmed on this, filmed on this campsite in Cornwall. I hope you've enjoyed them. There was four in total. I'll leave the other three in the link below so you can go and check them out if you'd like. All right, beautiful people, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll catch up with you next week. Over and out. <laughs>